All right. So as we discussed, like in what what exactly is SDN is that it is software defined networking approach to solve the challenges that we had in a LAN environment and in a WAN environment. So uh, in a data center network also, we have that concept of ACIs. There they use different set of controllers to manage the data center infrastructure. Let's not talk about the data center environment. Let's focus our uh, the focus of our content is soft software defined access, which is a solution designed to specifically campus area network. Uh, in this video, let's first talk about what were the challenges that we used to face in the van and how the software defined approach to manage the van infrastructure as the van helped us in overcoming those challenges. So in earlier days, when we talk about WAN, WAN was only and only about like connecting maybe your a few data centers to the branches or headquarter to the branches. Like we have this headquarter, we have this branch, we have this data center, for example, we have some other branches as well. So WAN was all about uh, connecting the different different locations all together using any sort of WAN transport such as MPLS or internet. People they were using MPLS as a main like primary transport and they were using internet more as of a backup van transport. Uh, over the end, in internet they used to use this DM VPN protected with IPsec. All these technologies they used to uh, uh, use to send the data over a public network such as internet and MPLS is comparatively considered as a secure transport when it comes to internet. So since the MPLS services are not shared with anyone, unlike internet, anyone can access the internet. Uh, MPLS can be considered as a much more better or much more secure transport in, in comparison to the internet. From that point of view that it is not publicly accessible. So companies, they can use the MPLS as their primary transport. They can use internet as a backup transport. All the traffic will go via MPLS. If the internet uh, MPLS goes down, then only the internet transport can be used. Users, for example, like there is a user uh, or here there is a user a user in a branch. If the user wants to access the internet, uh, user, even though it is directly connected with the internet, it cannot access the internet services directly. It has to go the traffic all the way might go towards the data center. And from the data center, we have like different different security appliances and all those things. Traffic might get inspected over those security appliances. And then internet is going to be provisioned from the data center, more like centralized provisioning of the internet services was there. Central breakout was there. Now, as the WAN technologies evolved, we now we are we started facing like a lot of issues in the WAN network. Like for example, nowadays WAN is not only about connecting your branches to the headquarter data center all to each other. It is about all the all the other things as well. For example, like in modern day network, a lot of services, a lot of uh, companies, they prefer their softwares to be hosted on cloud. They opt for this software as a service model provided by a lot of cloud service providers such as uh, AWS or Azure or even the Google Cloud. So nowadays, nowadays applications or softwares, they are moving to the cloud. It could be a public cloud. It could be a private cloud. Nowadays, internet is being provisioned locally onto the branch. Internet is, is basically moving uh, to the branches more like some sort of we might require direct internet access for a few users in the branches. In today's network, the business that the company has is not only going to be limited to the uh, computers like is, is, uh, like a static devices like the devices on which the people are going to use the services. They could be like mobile devices like there are there are, the use of mobile devices has increased a lot uh, in past few years. Bring your own device concept BYOD bring your own device concept is very popular in a, in, in a companies as well. Uh, for example, they, they could have a separate uh, uh, Wi-Fi for the guest users and they are required to use that Wi-Fi to access the internet services. The apps that uh, nowadays 
companies make they are going to consume comparatively a higher bandwidth because the content of the app is very rich it is a dynamic and it is more like web based content not only uh, not only uh, fixed devices but the mobile devices are also going to access uh, the services provided by your organization for example so a lot of a lot of new challenges uh, got introduced because of these companies are also opting for infrastructure as a service company might not uh, spend a lot of money or resources uh, building the physical infrastructure while they can uh, go for the services or infrastructure provided by some again cloud service provider there were a lot of challenges that uh, they were facing in in terms of van again how about like if you have to extend your network let's say currently you had like around 100 branches and what happened like uh, the network expansion happened and now you you have to add like 50 to 60 more branches you have to add uh, in every branch you at least have to add two devices so total approximately let's consider like 100 120 number of devices you have to add worldwide how you are going to apply same set of policy on all these devices from a centralized point or even though if the same policy you have to apply on these new devices someone has to do some sort of copy pasting thing and even if doing on that copy paste some confusion might be needed to change so as your network extends the management of the network gets uh, tough as well what about suddenly uh, you got a new software release and you now have to upgrade that that is a very stable software release a few bugs have been fixed so now what you had to do is that you had to uh, load up that release on all these previous under branches plus these 50 60 new branches as well how you are going to perform software upgrades on all these devices uh, like are you going to do that by going to each and every device one by one or are you going to do that from some centralized point these type of challenges were introduced as the van technology got evolved throughout the time not only single cloud but multiple clouds companies they go for some services companies might get better on one cloud uh, some services they might get better on the other cloud some services they might uh, get better on the other cloud google cloud so companies they might go for a multi cloud environment in their infrastructure so uh, we need someone who knows this aws who we need someone who knows this azure we need someone who knows this gcp so point is there are a lot of challenges that got introduced as the van got evolved throughout the time nowadays it's not only and only about connecting your headquarters to the branches and uh, to the data center maybe with the help of the van technology mpls for example like here the mpls services that we are having mpls is not a very cost effective solution you have the mpls option mpls as a van service to connect your data center to the branches headquarters and also you know it is not a very cost effective solution as well so to deal with all these challenges they thought of using again the software defined approach to manage these van edge devices all the van edge devices that you have in your infrastructure for example in my infrastructure i have this and this these two are the van edge devices and it could be any lan infrastructure i don't care but these are two van edge devices which are connected with the transport public transport such as internet and they might be connected with the private transport such as mpls as well i want similar to this we have like uh, 10 20 branches we have like 10 20 branches and in some branch we have only one router in some branch i have two routers for example and i want to have a central centralized control over all the aspects of this these vanes devices that sort of that sort of service we can get from the sd wan software defined approach to manage the vanes devices is what we get in the sd wan i'm not saying that you go for cisco sd wan you can go for the other sd wan uh, vendors as well you can go for uh, like velocloud versa vmware and the other vendors are there as well 
Cisco also offers SD-WAN solution based on Viptela and Cisco offers SD-WAN solution uh, based on Meraki. So Meraki SD-WAN is there, Viptela based SD-WAN, both are there. Uh, you can, based on your requirement, costing and everything, you can compare different, different SD-WAN solution and uh, you can you can opt for one if you want to manage like uh, all the awareness devices from the centralized point let me give you a brief overview what sd wan does in sd wan what they have done they have they have taken out all the intelligence of this device in and they created some uh, separate devices called controllers so software defined networking as dn software defined approach to manage the infrastructure uses some sort of controllers to have a centralized control everywhere the controller that sd wan uses is what we call something called v manage this is one of the controller that the sd wan viptela based sd wan uses so v stands for obviously viptela and v manage is the name of the controller that is there in the sd wan solution which is responsible to do all the management task from a centralized point. You can say we manage is the centralized management plane of the device. Second controller that is there in the SD-WAN is something called vSmart. vSmart you can say is the centralized control plane. It is the centralized control plane of the SD-WAN. All the control plane intelligence has been pushed to this controller called vSmart controller. There's also one more controller called bond, V bond. I was trying to make that joke for a very long time. So V bond is the controller that we have here, which is responsible to orchestrate the, uh, we call that V bond orchestrator. It is what we call as V bond orchestrator. It is responsible to orchestrate the management plane and control plane functions to the S devices. In short, v bond orchestrator is the device is the controller that allows the routers to find their respective management plane and the control plane whenever the edge devices the data plane devices we call them v edge devices or the c edge devices whenever these data plane devices come online these are the data plane devices so whenever these data plane devices come online they reach out to the v bond some sort of authentication takes place between these uh, v-bond orchestrator and the v-edge or c-edge device viptela based as device or cisco based as device in in vs devices we have viptela operating system in cs devices we have cisco ios xe as the van so these devices they reach out to the v-bond after some sort of mutual authentication v-bond is going to tell these as devices who is the v-manage and who is the v-smart basically v-bond is the orchestrator which tells DS devices about their control plane and the management plane. So in SD-WAN solution, you will see the use of these three controllers. These are three controllers and these are the S devices. S devices are based on, based on uh, V-Edge and C-Edge. Now we'll talk about these uh, solutions whenever uh, we study about SD-WAN someday, but our content is focused on SD access technology, not the SD WAN. So let me just give you a brief overview how this SD WAN, how how this V manage looks like, how we can do a centralized provisioning on on all the WAN edge devices. Note that SD WAN V manage is not going to manage the LAN devices; it is only for WAN edge devices. So what you can do actually, you can visit, you can go to Cisco D Cloud. You you go to the Cisco D Cloud. From here, you can obviously you have to log in. So you log in. From here, you can choose the appropriate data center that is nearest to your location. Then you can go to the catalog section. Under the catalog section, you can search here for the SD WAN. You can search here for the SD WAN. You search here for the SD WAN. And you will find like few demos that you can take for the SD WAN. Make sure that here in the content categories, you click on instant demo. Once you click on that instant demo, you will see that this Cisco SD-WAN, Cisco Secure SD-WAN 20.6 with cloud integration in instant demo, you can, you, can, you can launch it from here. Okay, you can just open the related document here, uh, like demo guide, you can open it on the side if you want. And rest, you can just click on view. 
Okay, once you click on view, it is going to open cloud based access to this V managed network management station. Okay, so what Cisco has done is that they have given us the access that we can at least view what as the man does, what are the advantages you will get as the man based on this, this pre configured lab. Now, here you have to log in and everything. So how you can log in, you can just again, you can just read this document here. You can read this document here. You open this document and here, uh, once you scroll down, this is the topology. Open image in new tab. I will open. This is the topology that they are going to use. Okay, in, in, in the demo, this is the topology that they are going to use. This is one data center. We have two NS devices. Here we have one branch where we have two devices when we have some IoT based uh, device branches where the IoT is being used. And, and basically, few branches are there here as well. Okay, now, uh, these devices are VS devices, these devices are CS devices, and they are connected via MPLES and internet. All those things are there. So this is the topology. And if you scroll down, this is right here, you will see the demo user ID and password. You will see all these things here. So what you have to do here, if you have to log in, you have to put that same user ID and password. So you will put that user ID and password, and you can click on login. This is how the V manage network management station GUI looks like. Wait for this to get load properly. So in a moment, you will see how the graphical user interface of vManage looks like and what things you can do from this centralized vManage. Note that the latest version of the SD-WAN is 20.7. They have given us the demo for 20.6. Here and there, a few functionalities might get changed, but the rest are going to be same. So as you can see, this is the main dashboard. Uh, from here, you can get the idea of like, for example, what are the top applications running in your infrastructure? Uh, like what from what place to what place application is specific routing, how it is being done, the health of the transport sites and everything, when is devices, control connections and all those things you can validate from here. It says there are two vSmarts connected, as you can see here. In the and on the controller side, they are using two vSmarts. There are total eight managed devices. There are total two v bond, one v manage. Two times it has been reboot since last like for last 24 hours and all those things you can see from here. If you click on these managed devices, you will see the list of all these managed devices, like same managed devices that are listed here. So okay, here you will get other options as well. For example, you can open the SSH terminal. You can open the device dashboard, you can open the real time, all those things you can do from the centralized point. So we might not have access to everything because there is just a demo. So you might not be able to have the access to everything, but whatever things you can do on the real device, you can check everything from here itself. Okay. So for example, uh, you can check the interfaces, statistics and all those things you can check from the centralized point as well. We might not have access to all these things. Okay. Because of the reason that it is just the demo. Okay, so we might not have the access to everything, but it, it shows you all these things here. So for example, like it is showing me that there are gigabit one, two, three, four, all these different different interfaces, administrative status and everything. What we have to do, swipe interface brief command we have to use for this output. And here we can just check it based on the GUI. MAC address and everything I can check. So this is just this is just a demo. So we might we might not have uh, the access to everything but from here you can you can you can take a look at the uh, different different things such as what applications are consuming what traffic then you can click on here you can go to the day this is this was the main dashboard you can check the vpn dashboard you can check the security dashboard in the security dashboard you can see how many times the firewall enforcement has uh, has been done for the traffic so how many how many uh, packets or how much packets got inspected by the firewall, how many, how much packets got dropped by the firewall and all those things in past 24 hours, past one hour, past seven days, all those things you can validate from here. Top signature hits, uh, URL filtering, uh, and AMP, advanced malware protection. So just in case if you have integrated some sort of security features, you will see all those things here itself. This is the security dashboard. Same like you have multi-cloud dashboard here as well. So if you are having and uh, support of different different clouds such as AWS, Azure, uh, or the Google Cloud, you can have all those things here itself. Now, let me go here. 
from here you can do all the monitoring related tasks like geographically you can validate what devices are connected there all those things you can validate from here okay like that you see there are two devices here so geographically if you want to check the things you can check it from here network specific things you can check it from here device by device any device you want to check you can just click on that device and everything related to the network you can check it from here uh, from the very end deep packet inspection application interfaces okay so whatever things we have permission to we can we can check otherwise we cannot basically so you know interfaces status all these things like packets all in a single uh, chart or different different chart we can validate all those things from here a lot of things are there a lot of things are there you can validate you can do al almost everything related to the monitoring from the centralized point okay then configuration when it comes to the configuration you can configure uh, different different things such as you can configure the uh, routing protocol such as ospf from here in the format of templates so if i search the template if i click on the template and if i search here ospf i might see that they have attached some ospf templates in some sites so there are total two devices where they have attached the ospf template two devices where they have attached the ospf template and now if i have to suppose run the ospf in in 100 more devices all i have to do is that i have to attach the ospf template to those 100 devices i don't have to do the configurations of ospf again and again i can click on here and i can view i can edit all those things i can do okay so but again same thing whatever things we are allowed to check i can check other things we cannot so just just take a look at that we can do different different configurations from the centralized point from here itself as well this is just a demo now we can also configure different different types of policies from the centralized point we have like all these devices connected i want to have some sort of hub and spoke type of policy i can have hub and spoke type of policy i can have a C flawed policy, I can have different different type of policies applied from the centralized point. I don't need to have a uh, different different uh, uh, CLI open to apply the policies. Centralized policy, localized policy. When you study SD WAN, you will come to know about all those things. Uh, so you can apply these different different types of policies from the centralized point. Fine. Different, different tools are there as well by which you can take the SSH access, you can rediscover the network operational commands, you can execute template migration, all those options are there as well. You can do the software upgrades and all those things from the centralized point as well. So if you want to upgrade the images, just click on here and upgrade. Basically, you have to up upload the image. You have to first of all upload the image here. Once you upload the image, just like they have done, then what you can do, you can upgrade. You can upgrade the code of the, you can upgrade the uh, image just like from here and click on upgrade, just a single click and the background process will follow and the software will be upgraded up for that device. Then uh, you go to the uh, administration. Here you will see some general settings and all those things. Now, if you, if you, if you want to talk about the uh, cloud connectivity, so, how the SD-WAN is going to interact with the devices hosted on the cloud, how SD-WAN is going to interact with the software hosted on the clouds. For, for this, they have this feature called Cloud on Ramp. You go on the configuration tab, you can see Cloud on Ramp for software as a service, Cloud on Ramp for infra as a service, Cloud on Ramp for multi-cloud, all those things are here. So either you can go from there or you can just click on here. So Cloud on Ramp for SaaS to, to better the experience of cloud delivered application, we can enable this thing called cloud on ramp for software as a service. To connect our SD-WAN with the cloud hosted infrastructure, we can use this thing called cloud on ramp for infrastructure as a service. If you are using like multiple clouds, in that case, we have this cloud on ramp for multi-cloud. So here we can have like AWS cloud, we have this uh, like uh, Azure cloud, we also have this Google cloud as well, like at the very end, GCP. So cloud on ramp for uh, multi-cloud support, they are adding so that you can have the support of like not only AWS Azure, you can also have the support for Google Cloud. So they are continuously improving on the services. So this is a central V analytics can give you the uh, like on-demand analytics analysis of the entire infrastructure at a, in, in a single page. It can tell you like uh, 
information related to the network it can tell you the information related to the devices like how many time network has gone down on all those things you can validate with the help of this v analytics so in short uh, let's not go in very detail of the uh, sd man but uh, uh, v manage is the centralized controller you will not get the access of the uh, v smart or the v bond uh, based on gy it is only for the v manage but you can clearly see that if you go on the configuration tab and on the devices tab you can see that this v manage is in fact uh, connected with the controllers the rest of the controller from here you can see that it is connected with the v smart it is connected with the v bond in fact all these v smarts and v bond i can access them using ssh i can i can do the configuration based on ssh but i will not get the gy access of them all these devices that we have any device any device you go to the monitor tab monitor and network and any device let's say for example dc vh1 okay and just go here and control connection you click on here and you will see that this device has connection over both the available transport mpls and internet so this device the data plane device is connected with the management plane and the control plane over the transport such as mpls and internet just to give you the brief idea about the sd van how sd van works and what facilities we get in the sd van uh, this we manage you can this Cisco based, this D cloud based, we manage. You can actually explore if you want. Just so to just so you get the idea how we manage or how this SD WAN can be helpful in your environment. Okay, so this SD WAN addresses those different different challenges that that you used to face. Uh, like we have the support for cloud based services. Let it be software or let it be infrastructure. Both is completely fine. Uh, we can do all the centralized provisioning from a centralized point as well we can all we can we can do all the configurations management uh, all the day zero day one day two operations everything you can do from the centralized we manage so yes as the van uh, based on the requirement if you have like 100 200 branches and you want to have a centralized control on the vanish devices of those branches you can definitely go for this as the van solution